We like to think that a totalitarian state is made up of innocent, oppressed individuals who are under the thumb of a, uh, an evil tyrant and that all of the catastrophes are cascading from the top down, but I don't think that that's true. I think that it's more like a holographic structure where the tyranny exists at every single level. So it exists psychologically and it exists within the family and it exists within the mid-level organizations. And so, well, you know, in Eastern Germany, for example, one out of every three people was a government informer. So what that meant is if you had a family of six people, that two of them you couldn't trust. And you can't, you can't just say that that's a consequence of the top-down structure. A tyranny is something that exists everywhere simultaneously once it, once it gets a grip. I don't think there's a shortage of examples of creeping authoritarianism in Western society, whether it's overreaching executive orders regarding certain medical procedures, politically motivated implications of corruption within our judicial system at the most local level, all the way up to the federal level, or increased calls for censorship from our news media for the purpose of quote unquote harm reduction. These need to be nuanced conversations, not edicts, not orders. This is complicated, but harm reduction is possible. This is not ultimately about freedom of speech. It's about freedom of reach. But as Jordan Peterson points out, the most dangerous form of tyranny that we face is not political or legal, but psychological. It's the tyranny that we witness and are subjected to in our personal lives, the tyranny that we actively participate in by lying. And in this video, we're going to break down a dramatic representation of how this psychological tyranny manifests itself and might play out at, for example, your place of work or amongst your friends and family. The scene we're going to archetypally analyze is from HBO's TV series Succession. You do not have to have seen or know anything about the show because I will briefly provide all of the relevant background info you need to know in order to directly connect it back to Jordan Peterson's fundamental points. So here we go. The main characters in the show work at a company called Waystar Royco. Waystar owns a number of theme parks and right-leaning news networks. So you can think of them as a cross between Disney and Fox News, which is sort of what the show implies. Logan Roy is the founder and CEO of Waystar Royco, and his children compete with each other and other company execs for power and influence within the company. Put it simply, Logan is a tyrannical asshole. He's a liar, a blackmailer, a manipulator. He's a corrupt businessman. He's the archetypal representation of an evil capitalist. The issue here, sir, is that everyone fucking hates you. It's cloudy. It's sunny. Here is a disturbing scene that perfectly exemplifies how Logan uses fear and psychosocial manipulation tactics to debase the people at his company and bend them to his will. Which one of you boys did it? Tom! Yes? Sit on the floor! It's fun. Seriously? Yeah, it's a game. Bore on the floor. I really, I feel... Get down! Bore on the floor! Bore on the floor. Kendall, ring the troops. Bore on the floor. Bore on the floor. Get down. Greg, on the floor, Bore. Bore on the floor. Bore on the floor. Come feed the piggies, guest of honor. Bore on the floor. That's it. Bore on the floor. Bore on the floor. Oink for your sausages, piggies. Shh. Oink for your sausages, piggy. Oink, oink. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oink for your sausages, Tom. Oink, oink. oink. No, no, no half-hearted oink. I want full hearted oink. Oink, 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 oink! So you get the picture. Now, here is the scene we're going to analyze that I think perfectly represents the idea that tyranny exists at every level of a social institution and that it is perpetuated by people's willingness to lie to themselves and each other. The setup for this scene is that Logan is telling the board of Waystar Royco that they are going to buy out a rival news organization called PGM. Put simply, this is an objectively terrible business decision driven by Logan personal hatred for PGM, and he's essentially putting his entire company and the careers of everyone in the room at risk. So with that in mind, let's watch the scene. So? Just taking five to regroup. I've got three banks, 50 lawyers, two PR agencies. D.F. Kings and an army of private dicks trying to fight this takeover, but take five to eat my pastries, why don't you? Uh, we were actually at uh, something of an impasse. Um, there were some doubts as to whether, you know, an acquisition is really what we need right now. Uh-huh. It is. The bigger the better. And I have it. 
We're going for PGM. It's an um, interesting challenge because last time we tried it, their surrogates called us cultural vandals and poison in the well of public discourse. <laughs> well, times have changed. We're going to fucking eat them up. Good? Yeah, let's do it. I like it. Oh, fuck off, dude. Don't be such a suck up. It's pathetic. What about you, Romulus? Uh, I fucking love it, but that's my honest opinion. Great. Forward. Fast. We all like this? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sure, now watch carefully and you'll see how lies and self-deception prop up the tyranny of a tyrant that's not even in the room. We are rolling the dice on a $20 billion crapshoot. So. Okay, I mean, yeah, if there are doubts, oh, let's, I, let's air them. I, no, I... No, because you're right, if the debt from an acquisition like this became unmanageable, we could death spiral and then uh, we'd all go down with the ship. It would be a reputational and financial disaster for all of us, right? What are you so, saying, Ken? No, I'm just gauging the room. No, it's nonetheless extremely exciting. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, I, I like it. Good. Good? Okay, good, great. Let's, uh, let's bag this elephant for death. Now for me, this scene resonated because I have witnessed something similar in terms of the pathological social dynamics that prevent people from saying what they actually believe to be true. Like imagine you're out with coworkers or friends at dinner and politics comes up because it always does nowadays. And you say something to the effect of, you know, I don't particularly support Black Lives Matter. And someone says, well, what do you mean, man? You, you don't think that racism is a problem? And it's like, well, no, I, I just don't think that burning down property is a good way to affect political change. Well, but property can be replaced. So your focus on the burning a property and not the lives is an indication of your racial privilege, yada, 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 insert ideologically generated speech content here. And in this age of hyperpolarization and constant lying from the media and political class, we all take it for granted that you cannot say reasonable truths without getting unreasonably attacked. And part of what goes into that, part of what underlies these dynamics, is the psychosocial manipulation that is primarily delivered to us by means of social media. How can you say you're against Black Lives Matter when these struggle sessions occur in which you are demanded to raise your fist in solidarity with the movement? And because this psychological tyranny was tolerated and not spoken up against, idiot ideas like defunding the police were allowed to happen. And now the most vulnerable people are the ones paying the price. And we let that happen. And so understanding how this psychological tyranny works is vital to protect others and ourselves from the idiocy of such tyranny. And even though succession is a fictional story, it captures the subtle social dynamics that facilitate the kind of tyranny I'm talking about. When a society becomes tyrannical like that, the tyranny exists at every single level of the society. You ty tyrannize your own conscience. And then every single level of the bureaucracy is exactly the same as that. And on the top, there's a tyrant. But the tyrant is everywhere, everywhere, from the peak to the soul. It's all tyranny. Emerson said, every institution is the shadow of a single man. And everyone participates in that by lying about everything. What are you so, saying, Ken? No, I'm just gauging the room. No, it's nonetheless extremely exciting. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, I, I like it. And remember, while a single tyrant at the top of a society or a single organization might project tyrannical control, it is each individual within that society or organization who allows that control to maintain itself. So Solzhenitsyn in particular laid at the feet of the Soviet citizenry the burden of the absolute catastrophes that characterized that system because of the, each individual's propensity or proclivity within the state to lie and deceive constantly about what they thought and what they said, and to be afraid to speak, and to be afraid to think, and to be afraid to criticize. And it was no wonder, because criticism, of course, was at least, at, at least became an offense that was punishable by death. But these things start 
much more slowly than that. And they start with people abandoning their, their own identities and adopting a pathological group identity. Well, for, it, for any number of reasons, but one of them certainly is their desire to shrink for in, from individual responsibility. And one of the important things that I was not able to highlight in this video, and what Succession does so well, is show how each of these characters allows themselves to be tyrannized by Logan Roy because of their moral failings, their willingness to lie for the sake of power and to avoid conflict and responsibility. So if you do not want to end up like a character on this show and you no longer wish to see people in your city murdered as a result of criminally negligent policies being put into place by ideologically possessed narcissists who will one day reap what they sow, then I suggest you look inward, you put your own life together, and when you are amongst friends and family and co-workers, you say what you believe to be true as best as you can. And that is what I will continue to do on this channel for as long as I'm around to do it. So, good luck, and Godspeed.